Yeah, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Glad to be here at COC 2023. Excellent, my welcome to everyone here for this week. My name is Amrit Sarkar, and in this session, we will try to form a holistic view of what to monitor in Apache Kafka cluster, running on multiple servers for real-time messaging use cases. I work as a senior software engineer at Apple in AIML domain. I have been building and improving search-based use cases on Kubernetes in last eight plus years. And recently, devoted my energy to work on Kafka, Spark, Flink, streaming use cases in general. Now, I very well understand the audience here is very mature, and we like to deep dive into cutting edge features in the streaming tools. I myself like that. While this talk specifically is from Kafka operation lens, it is from a user and from an administrator perspective uh, who are ramping up in this space. So there is a good chance you may know most of the things we discuss in the next 30 minutes. Given that disclaimer, <laughs> we will begin our discussion by uh, dedicating some minutes to understand how Kafka works internally. Um, it is crucial to cover the core fundamentals such that we know where to look when something goes wrong. We will explore the necessity of going beyond monitoring options and adopting an observability mindset. Subsequently, we will focus on the primary performance areas surrounding Kafka, classifying and dissecting the available metrics. Um, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. In the later part of our discussion, we will focus on drawing inferences from consumer lag, a vital performance gauge to evaluate the overall performance of the Kafka cluster. We will conclude this talk by examining the trends we need to be aware in order to make functional and technical decisions. All the factors to be discussed in this talk um, is, is the knowledge I've been able to gain in the last couple of years. I welcome experienced Kafka practitioners to share their insights at the end of the session. Okay, so a messaging system is responsible for transferring data from one application to another, allowing the applications to focus on data without worrying about how to share it. Apache Kafka is a distributed sub-messaging system, a robust queue that can handle a high volume of data and enables you to pass messages from one endpoint to another. Uh, in the pub subsystem, um, messages are persisted so that anyone can subscribe to consume and process them based on their use cases. Kafka is suitable for both offline and online message consumption. It supports low latency delivery, highly available, provides a guarantee of fault tolerance in the presence of machine failures. Uh, Kafka can be used for a number of use cases like monitoring data, which involves aggregating statistics from distributed applications to produce centralized feeds. It can uh, be used across an organization to collect logs from multiple services. Uh, its strong durability is very useful in the context of streaming processing, where popular frameworks like Spark, Strom, and Flink use Kafka as a layer for processing incoming data. Now, producers are responsible for writing data in the form of messages to the Kafka cluster. A Kafka cluster comprises of a number of Kafka servers called brokers, where messages are persisted in a distributed and replicated manner. We will get into those details later. Producers write messages in a unique logical queue called Kafka topics in the brokers. And finally, consumers subscribe to these topics to read the incoming messages. Brokers up until Kafka version 3.x used Zookeeper as a coordination tool to manage the cluster state. In the newer versions, the need for Zookeeper is deprecated and being removed. Right, okay, a Kafka topic as mentioned consists of logical queues which can be partitioned to achieve concurrency. These partitions are then further consumed by one or more consumer groups. Each consumer group is comprised of multiple consumers, each responsible for reading records from one or more partitions for a topic. We refer to each uh, unique message entity in a partition as a record. In this case, we have three partitions for a topic, respectively a consumer group of three consumers, each taking care of one partition. A goal for a consumer group is to read records from all the partitions for the topic. A unique integer offset value is associated with each record at each partition, here 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Consumers keep track of this offset in a persistent manner to read the next record. 
when a message is written to the topic based on the internal criteria, essentially a hashing algorithm, the new record is added to one of those partition. Producers can also write a message or a record to a specific partition too. Now, uh, let's see what happens if a consumer in a group fails or is being removed by the user. In this case, partition 2's consumer has been removed from the group. Internally, one of the brokers act as a group coordinator and set heartbeats to each consumer within the group to verify its active status. One of the active and existing consumers will take responsibility for consuming the remaining records from the partition 2. Since the offsets for partitions are tracked at a group level, no data loss is encountered. This activity of moving partitions among consumers is called rebalancing and the consumer group leader elected by the group coordinator is responsible for it when consumers are added or removed. Now, in a Kafka cluster, multiple brokers runs on servers, providing durability and high availability to the topics. In this case, we have two brokers and topics are divided and replicated in the following manner. We have topic T1, which has two partitions, P0 and P1. Each partition has two replicas. Broker 1 contains one set, broker 2 contains the other. For each partition, there will be a leader replica responsible for both read and write. When producers write messages to topic T1, for P0 partition, they will be first written to replica R1, also consumed by the R1 replica only. Internally, brokers will further propagate the messages to the follower replicas of a partition. For partition P1, this role will be played by a replica R2. Using a single replica is both uh, read and write ensures consistency at all levels. Taking another example for topic T2, we have a single partition, two replicas, their re leader resides on broker one, while for topic T3, the leader resides on broker two. Now, with so many dynamic pieces, one of the brokers assumes the role of a controller, which performs a various administrative tasks. All create, update, or delete request, uh, topic requests sent by the user are processed only by the controller broker. If a controller, if a if a broker which is not a controller fails, few of the leaden partition replica can become unavailable. The controller reassigns leadership role to other in sync partition replicas and consistently tracks the replica status for further decision. The controller acts as the brain of the cluster for partition leadership management. I have abstracted a great deal of internal and design details, which arguably makes Kafka one of the best well-maintained and improved open source technologies. Much has been done lately with Keraft protocol uh, implemented in brokers, phasing out Zookeeper's need for cluster management and election commission. Please uh, check out Confluent and submit talks to understand them better. All right, so before moving on to the nitty gritties of the available metrics, we first need to summarize the performance areas one can improve while running multiple Kafka pipelines. Throughput and latency go side by side in distributed system and same holds true for Kafka. A consistent focus is required to improve or uh, optimize the production and consumption rates with finite resources. Having clarity on the maximum possible producer throughput helps in determining batches while streaming data into the cluster. Meanwhile, consumers on the right hand side must be able to read or process the incoming data without failing too much behind. A consumer lagging behind a producer is denoted by consumer lag and the smaller the absolute value of the lag is, it's better. Another principle we need to ensure is data integrity. Kafka provides tunable durability on reads and writes, making it quite convenient to achieve desired throughput, which complements the latencies involved. Producers can push messages to brokers and either wait for acknowledgement from one of the brokers or all of the brokers or not wait for acknowledgement at all. The more acknowledgement needed, the higher the write latencies will be, and off, but it will offer better durability as you can confident the data is replicated across the cluster. Conservatively, uh, production rate or throughput will be high if messages are just pushed to brokers and does not wait for the acknowledgement. One should have a correct, expect uh, correct expectations from the cluster based on the level of durability adopted. Now, proper distribution of brokers across servers, regions, racks, which ensures no business impact on failures. Careful consideration needs to be taken to formulate the cluster state configuration while setting up clus uh, Kafka cluster for a test environment versus a production environment. 
And finally, we look at the raw usage at the server storage and network levels. Um, both CPU and memory work best in terms of performance and cost when they are neither underutilized or overutilized. Determining the sweet spot for a cluster can take a while in terms of storage and network bandwidth. Adopting best in class components helps to avoid unnecessary hygiene based problems. All right, before classifying the performance areas now around the Kafka components, let's try to understand why we need to go beyond bare monitoring solutions and build frameworks to observe our system. Monitoring typically provides a limited view of system data focused on individual metrics. This approach is sufficient when the system failure modes are well understood. Um, monitoring tends to focus on key indicators such as utilization rate, throughput, which indicate overall system performance. As applications becomes more complex, so do their failure modes. It is often impossible to predict how distributed applications will fail. By making a system observable, you can comprehend its internal state. And from that, we can determine what is working and why it is not working. Apache Kafka in itself does not report problems. It only reports metrics. One of the elements we discussed in the basics was controller broker, an active controller count metric exposed by Kafka must and must be one. If there are more controllers, it will lead to split brain problem. Alerting can tell us there is an issue, but good observability can help us determine the root cause, like servers restarting, NTP clock failure, network packet dropping, which can potentially lead to this multiple brokers, uh, controllers. So each component in Kafka cluster from left to right act as a performance gate in the system. Starting with producers, the throughput of pushing messages must be tracked. Any abnormal spikes and whether uptrend or a downtrend needs to be investigated. Regarding the internal components within Kafka, maintaining an overall uh, topic overview of topic health within the brokers is desirable. If one or set of brokers becomes unavailable, Overseeing which topics are affected for pushing the messages is crucial. Since um, multiple brokers are part of the cluster hosting tens of thousands of partition, a stable distribution of these partitions across brokers based on server resources is recommended. Therefore, keeping track of number of partitions being hosted along with bytes in and out of each broker helps us observe load distribution. Now, in terms of topics, dwelling one level further into the brokers, visualizing each partition health in terms of availability via replication can be done. We can also look at leader partition replica bytes in and out as a potential performance gate. Though messages are equally distributed across partition by default, user can direct messages to specific partitions via custom routing. Consequently, unstable partition load distribution can form and thus needs to be in check. Consumer rate similar to producers must be tracked, uh, must be tracked along with extent to which a consumer is lagging behind. Lag in absolute and relative term is the single most important metric to be tracked to determine Kafka cluster performance as a messaging system. And finally, we look at um, the elements binding the system together. Network latencies between server in one or more regions, CPU memory, I input output spikes, all contributing to the performance of a distributed system as a whole. We plot performance around components to help us clearly distinguish between client, broker, and application problems. There are a bunch of ways to get Kafka and underlying infrastructure metrics into a time series format for visualization and to take actions based on them. For this talk, we have taken the popular route of exposing JMS metrics for each broker to a Prometheus server and visualizing them on Grafana. Zookeeper, Zookeeper Ensemble, if still being used, can also expose its metrics to Prometheus using built-in exporter. With this rich, vibrant open source uh, ecosystem, Kafka offers a range of administrative monitoring, alerting, and observability frameworks, both paid and free, all available with detailed documentation. Popular ones are Confident Control Center, Kartrop, uh, Yahoo Kafka Manager, Cruise Control, among a bunch of other tools mentioned. Okay, so we begin with producer rate. Now there are a number of ways to push data to a Kafka cluster against a topic. One such function is send available in a Kafka Java client. We, when processed successfully, it returns a record metadata object. The object has an offset value. 
and it represents the records position per topic partition combination. If we push this offset value through instrumentation to Prometheus, run a one minute rate query on top of it and visualize it, we can start seeing some patterns on time schedules. In this case, we are observing a decent spike in incoming traffic around midnight. There are other ways to also track this offset value at the broker level for each topic partition combination. Now, records can be sent to Kafka brokers either one at a time or in multiples, which would constitute a batch. Kafka thrives on overall throughput through the transmission of larger batches to brokers. Kafka also provides the capability to compress records sent to brokers with four available compression formats. An individual produced request with higher number of records in a batch performs better from a compression perspective as well. However, we must ensure that the upper bound of the batch remains in check and under control to avoid uh, garbage collection activity, especially young generation activity um, at the producer layer. Keeping these factors in mind, there are three outstanding metrics we uh, need to monitor from the producer client, especially when a new data ingestion pipeline is being established. Ideally, we want to achieve high throughput represented as bytes, uh, batch size in bytes from the producer with the metric name batch size average there is also the compression rate average, which tells us the ratio of compressed bytes to the original uncompressed bytes sent to Kafka. We want the compressed bytes to be as small as possible. So that this ratio needs to be as low. Finally, while keeping both the metrics in balance, we aim to achieve the best possible latency from Kafka producer client, stated by metric name uh, request latency average. Please note these metrics comes in statistical variants. So you can have percentiles, minimum, max, and so on. Moving on, uh, there are four key metrics in Kafka system for which we should expect an alert as soon as something goes wrong. Starting with ACC, active controller count, value must be one. Um, if the other value is more than one, it can result in um, uh, cluster cluster commands without synchronization or consistent or, or consistency, ultimately leading to entire uh, failure state for the Kafka cluster. They're dedicated uh, JMS metrics for it. And as we learn together, the values must be one. Next, we ensure that all the partitions for all the topics in the Kafka are available and not offline. There is a dedicated uh, metric which represents whether partitions are offline irrespective of the topic. This singular metric value must be zero at all times or we should be alerted. These offline partitions are neither available for read or write and are generally caused by failures on servers. The, the, the JMX metrics name is offline partition count. Now, when we establish replication for partition across the system, we also have to set a minimum value of ISR that is in sync replicas for partition. Kafka broker returns the acknowledgement for a successful write for a batch only when the data is replicated across a definite minimum number of replicas you have specified. If at any point of the time in sync replicas are lower than what is configured, an alert must be raised. And since producer write will be halted until resolution, the metric name is under min ISR partition count. The name suggests number of partitions available in, in the discuss situation. In ideal, in all cases, the number, the value should be zero. Otherwise, it can lead, lead to um, data loss. Uh, we discussed some very definite metrics here and how to raise an alert if a certain value is not masked. Further on the analysis front, keeping track of consumer lag per partition per topic provides us with the understanding how streaming is performing. We will discuss consumer lag in detail with an observability lens later. Now, static values in Grafana are best denoted as counter metric and with the potential of alert manager to send necessary notification. Metrics are pushed, can be pushed with a bunch of labels and we can plot such um, uh, dynamic widgets. Here, ACC is one, zero offline partition count for both the brokers. There are no under minimum in-sync replica partitions across the 10 plus topics hosted on this cluster. This is a very typically a happy case, a happy cluster. Now let's dig, a, uh, let's dig deeper into brokers health metrics. We start with load distribution among brokers for hosting partitions of different topics. 
in most use cases around the kafka cluster the distribution of partitions for all the topics batching or streaming is done almost equally among the brokers there can be a specific business case where data needs to be sent to a specific partition based on proximity region design decisions etc keeping a check on number of partitions per broker helps avoid a heavy load on a broker server though this is subject to actual bytes in and out with actual bytes bytes in and out taking a holistic view at the network behavior whether successful or erroneous helps indicate the true load skewness if it exists along with foreseeing an, an, along with uh, seeing unforeseeable uh, issues with the general uh, data center setup including hardware network request per second and error per uh, second per broker can be tracked in a time series format now each broker has a log file per part per topic and per partition where new data gets appended on disk these cache based writes are flushed to disk in a certain format based on many kafka internal factors and are performed asynchronously to provide optimized performance and durability the longer it takes uh, to flush the log to disk the more the pipeline from producer to consumer backs up and both latency and throughput worsen when fl uh, when flush time increases even as small as amount of 10 milliseconds the overall lat latency can balloon up and can lead to under replicated partitions as we discussed earlier if the latency is rising it points to the better need of hardware or we need to scale up the jms metric is available to observe log flush latency now how much a follower partition replica is lagging in terms of records is aggregated at a topic partition level at a broker this allows the monitoring the broker's capability to keep replicas in sync within the partition the expected value for this metric fetcher lag should be zero or very low indicating the broker is able to keep up with the replication internally if the metric is increasing it can uh, the issue can be maybe unexpected high producer rate or fundamental server problem now visualizing this matrix together provides a much clearer view here it is evident that broker zero which is hosting 68 partitions in total is significantly doing more work than broker one which is holding 15 the load skewness is apparent in network request per second um in the in the uh, yeah and uh, yeah and the corresponding log flush rate in the middle even though broker 0 is hosting four um times more partition than broker 1 the log flush time as shown as the bottom left panel is not affected and both brokers are on par with each other this is another happy case where the fetcher lag is absolutely zero with no follower partition replica lagging behind note all these metrics are at per broker level moving on to the consumers the last piece of the pipeline um now there are two types of offset uh, kept at a partition level the current offset and the committed offset the current offset is the position from which the new record next new record will be fetched when it is available it is simple integer or a long value kafka used to maintain the consumer's current position while the committed offset is the position that the con consumer has confirmed it has processed we don't need to maintain messages until this offset anywhere committed offsets are used to avoid uh, resending the same records to new consumer in the event of a partition rebalance now we have two consumer groups here a and b both for both the current offsets are four all the messages have been propagated to the respective groups and are being processed at their own speed group a is at four hence the committed offset is 4 while for while for b it is 2 these committed offset values of respective groups are then can be internally written by brokers to an independent kafka topic called under double underscore consumer underscore offsets uh, it keeps this topic to keep track for the future if desired we can also also push this uh, offset values to a custom topic before we explore how to build alerting on top of these uh, consumer offsets let's briefly glance over the best practices required how frequently a consumer needs to commit the offset of the record back to the broker if offset commit uh, if uh, offset commits occur too frequently it increases network overhead uh, as every commit involves a network call to kafka brokers with high volume of messages 
too much Kafka traffic and slow down processing. Similarly, the broker needs to process every commit, exerting more pressure on CPU and memory. Commits are synchronous by default, which can introduce latency into the overall system if somewhat frequent uh, commits occur. To address this, uh, we might consider the following approaches. Instead of committing after every message, consider committing after batch of messages. This reduces all the latency overhead. Use asynchronous commit, which don't wait for the acknowledgement for the commit itself from the broker. Uh, this approach can improve throughput, but then we need to handle the potential commit failures at your own end. Uh, if you are using the auto commit feature, which is enabled by default, that is the consumer will automatically commit off offsets uh, periodically. We can adjust how frequently this uh, auto commit uh, we, we need to do. Now, uh, the frequency of the commit also ties to the desired processing semantics. If we want stronger guarantees, this the, the commit needs to happen more frequently. Okay. The partition topic, consumer offsets, we discussed a couple of slides ago, can further be consumed by the same Kafka cluster with dedicated consumer. Values are returned to a time series database like Prometheus and visualized on Grafana like this. This offset, a long value, can be emitted for every topic for a topic, for every consumer for a topic down to its individual partition. Uh, there are tools available, both open source and paid, that, that do all of this for us, and we can visualize true consumer offsets and consumer rate on a time series basis. We are going to discuss one such tool next. Now, Burrow, LinkedIn's open source monitoring companion for Apache Kafka, provides consumer lag checking as a service without, need, without the need for specifying thresholds. It exposes consumer offset as a gauge metric to Prometheus in a consumer partition combination for a topic makes it very convenient to visualize in a real time time. We will understand what a lag offset denotes in the next slide. Okay, Burrow automatically monitors all consumers using these Kafka committed offsets. It registers a consumer group, reads committed offsets, make metrics available for evaluation in a sliding window manner. Being written in Golang, it boasts uh, excellent concurrency features and compatibility with Kubernetes. Uh, most of the tools do. Uh, an HTTP endpoint is provided to request status on demand. Additionally, there are configurable notifiers that can send status update via email or HTTP calls to Slack or PagerDuty. And there are a bunch of other tools available which do the same job the borough do. Right. Okay, lag in Kafka terms is essentially the, dis uh, the difference between the head offset, the latest offset of the broker, and the consumer offset for a given partition of our a given partition of a topic for a consumer. It is typically a long value. Burrow internally manages both offsets, calculates the lag, and stores it locally in a time series format. Trends are evaluated on a window. It could be one hour window, two hour window, and respective alerts are triggered. As you can see in this example, the, the consumer offset has been rising for the last 60 minutes, depicting message consumption is happening regularly. While the lag graph does not display a specific uptrend or a downtrend, it suggests that the consumer is able to catch up with the production rate uh, in, in its due time. We as Kafka administrator need not to be worried. The status of the consumer will be evaluated as okay. Examining an another case, uh, this is a typical trend where the consumer lag is increasing, evident by the clear uptrend on the left panel, along with the rising consumer offset. It is quite evident that the consumer is not able to process data swiftly as it is being written by the producer. If we plot an hourly chart graph here, we observe consumer rate is lingering around 2 million messages per hour, the blue line on the bottom, while the producer rate has suddenly increased well beyond 4 million and reached 8 million too. Some work is needed at the consumer level to match the incoming rate. The status of the consumer will be in warning state. If the producer a rate decreases back to 2 million per hour, the consumer can eventually catch up. However, if the uptrend continues for the lag, it can create a problematic situation. Since each message at the broker has a time to live, TTL, there is a substantial risk of losing data due to the approaching TTLs. The next step devised uh, uh, can be, uh, the next steps can be possibly adding more partitions or adding more consumers to the consumer group or scale the servers which are hosting this consumer itself. The broker metrics we discussed can help us make that decision. 
Now consumers can stop processing incoming data entirely and can stall with lag increasing at the same rate as producer. Plotting an early chart graph confirms that the consumer is evaluated as stalled and an error alert, and an error, error alert uh, will be sent across. Consumer can be stalled for various reasons um, like server caches, complete network packet drops, the disk on which the consumer is hosting being full and so on. Benefit of tracking stalled consumer is the ability to identify orphaned consumers that are no longer in use. I sometimes create and start ad hoc consumers to test some random use case on production pipelines and forget about it for the next week or the next day itself. This helps me keep these, uh, having these test pipelines in check. What we discussed in the last three slides about customer uh, consumer state evaluation can entirely be automated with smart workflows and notification can be sent to the consumer group owners, freeing up a lot of DevOps time. Now, let's try to understand if we can draw more insights from this panel graph. Uh, the top two broker and consumer offset line graphs plotted per hour looks almost identical, denoting there must, must have been no issue at all, uh, which is the time frame is around four days. While we look at the consumer lag line graphs, uh, spikes are increasing at various points during this period. Burrow or any other tool will detect the spike and send alert to administrator. We have seen this issue a, a, a lot of times. One of the fundamental issues uh, we face while analyzing absolute values is uh, we get alert even though we don't have a relative base. So there are these are seven to eight false alarms we will receive in a four day period. Now let's convert this consumer lag into relative terms. Let's examine the scenario of a producer consumer interaction in Kafka. The producer was at offset value 134 at midnight, 144 10 minutes later, 154 at 1220. We can reduce the producer rate in this case um, is one minute per minute, uh, one message per minute. While the consumer is trailing behind uh, being at offset offset value 134 when the producer is, is at 154. With this data, we can determine a time-based lag uh, by, by taking the difference between the last producer offset and the last consumer offset at a given point in time and dividing it by the current producer, we obtain lag in time units. So here at 1220, the difference in the offsets divided by the producer yields 20 time unit, time minute units. What this 20 signifies is at 12.20, if the producer stops writing more data, it will take approximately 20 more minutes for the consumer to catch up with all the records. Now, with our absolute consumer offset lag graph, we plot time-based data side by side. In the time-based lag graph, the consumer is mostly 10 minutes behind the producer, uh, the, the chart at the bottom. And it's pretty evident that there are no significant peaks and apart from six, seven odd long bars, which does not exhibit any continuity. The chart at the bottom doesn't suggest any major or minor issues, which can, and we can confidently categorize this as a normal trend for a consumer, just like we hypothesized when we were looking at the producer and the consumer rate. Converting the lag in time units helps us get much better understanding of how far a consumer is lagging behind if we need to ensure some SLAs. Moving away from the absolute values and adopting time-based um, brings all the Kafka pipelines together under the same base. We can test, experiment with different topics and their configurations and can find that sweet spot of the lag, uh, of the consumer lag. This is not new. It is a very common statistical function uh, which has been applied for other observability frameworks too. Now, one of the most important activities uh, we undertake uh, with time series data involves analyzing trends. That is understanding historical behavior to predict the future. How much data came in last week versus the previous one? We kind of, uh, what kind of traffic we can expect on a big day sale? Analyzing trends provides clarity. Starting with the rate of topic growth, growth here suggests producer rate is moving up with more customers maybe coming into a platform. Is the lag well under control? Do we need to add more partition? We can make an educated judgment by analyzing these intervals and topic metric data. 
one of the fundamental issues we have observed involves abnormal spikes at producers without the service provider being informed. In some cases, we do control the incoming data rate, but the right expectation needs to be set to not overwhelm your cluster entirely. Similarly, for consumer, a down spike needs to be alerted, which provides potential infrastructure failures. Now, every message after being written to partition in broker is kept for a while. It has a time to live. And uh, this retention span, within this retention span time, the consumer reads to uh, read the record. If the time lag goes beyond the TTL, it is guaranteed that few messages will be lost. So looking at the time lag as a historical trend over a period is better than the absolute value. We did not discuss infrastructure or process level metrics for Kafka in this talk, but server, network layers, disk, cloud providers, if applicable, are equally important as functional metrics. Having proper visualization of CPU, memory, storage consumption helps us avoid cluster killing scenarios. Consumers or client have metrics too, and keep, uh, keeping a good eye on GC activity can help us understand how resources allocated are being utilized. If you're still running Zookeeper Ensemble for Kafka brokers, taking a holistic view of its own health is desirable. Also, based on the hardware it is hosted upon, there is a soft upper limit of hosting partition. Currently, it is advised for a cluster to have a maximum of 4,000 partitions per broker, partly due to the overhead of performing leader elections on Zookeeper. Streaming world is moving very fast. In this talk, we may have overlooked some important metrics or trend that experienced Kafka practitioners have known over the years. I'm really looking forward to the receiving feedback and learning from the community to build observability around this Kafka pipelines better. I have listed respective references behind a URL. Um, this URL has everything, um, the entire talk. Official Kafka documentation. There is a great talk by Pepper Data on the Kafka monitoring back in the day. Um, Burrow, Prometheus, Grafana, all these uh, platforms come together to build these observability frameworks. Uh, in terms of a good study material for an observability topic, Google Cloud team has published a paper which actually provides us a meaningful uh, ways of measuring.